welcome back to my next video on the basic chemistry I in the previous video I have introduced about the word of uh, homogeneous heterogeneous physical separations and also we have go through a few terms like a law and a few, few other substances as well so now we're going to listen uh, uh, the, the following part will be I would like to introduce the term element what do I mean by element? Element is a substance that cannot be separate into simpler substance by chemicals mean. It means element is the simplest particle that can be presented. Such as I have oxygen. Oxygen is an element. I have nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element. So I can further break the atom. Uh, this element to a much simplest form therefore we call this here as a element simplest atom so uh, we have on in a, those element has been arranged in a periodic table of element we have find almost 140 actually they are more coming in okay we have more like aluminium oxygen calcium magnesium aluminium we have etc etc a lot of element uh, elements okay when we are talking about elements those are the, uh, normally those elements have been found by scientists of course okay as i told you those elements are represented in the periodic table remember guys when in the periodic table of elements you will come across the name and each element do have their own symbols like aluminium as nick barium bismuth and more and more iodine iron silicon silver all those have a different element you must have a look you must have a look at the periodic tables for rest of the elements. So let's look at the next slide. As I say, compound. Now I would like to introduce, we have done with the element. Now we would like to introduce compound. What is compound? Compound is a substance composed of atoms of two or more ele uh, elements chemically unite in a fixed proportion. Proportions mean compound can only be separated into their pure component by chemicals mean so at this particular point you must understand we have uh, earlier we have discussed about physical separations am i right you can separate them based on a simple method using a magnet or different boiling point to get a pure component but when it comes to a compound you can't separate them in a simple way because compound is actually a combination of element or atom that this combination is actually have a chemical bond this chemical bond is what we call as ionic bond or a covalent bond so the atom is combined due to some chemical interactions and it form a chemical bond this chemical bond in order to break this chemical bond you need a huge amount of energy therefore you must you might you can you still can separate them but the separation is called as a chemical separations normally the easiest way to separate them is a simple electrolysis method so you have a solution or you have a liquid you can separate them to individual elements or the components by using electrolysis method okay those are the compound let's look at the next term so far as you can see over here we have introduced classification of matter as i told you matter can be separated as a mixture where the mixture can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous homogeneous it form a no there is no phase separation and if it is a heterogeneous, heterogeneous they do have a phase separation and come back to here a pure substance when i say a pure substance it can be either a compound such as o2 oxygen gases a compound with a mixture of it 
and we only might have uh, elements elements only such as a uh, gold au silver only ag those are the element if i'm talking about compound and also element those are the differences and let's look what else we have over here this is what i told you in the very beginning of an earlier chapter which i have told you that matter chemistry is all about the study of matter matter can exist either in solid liquid or gas so those are the arrangements of a particles in a different state we have a solid state liquid state and of course we have a gas state over here so those are the different state and have a look so three state of metal effect of a hot pour on a block of ice okay okay if this is a very good example over here they actually say they are showing uh, ice is melting it's undergo a melting process where when i'm talking ice it is in a solid state it have a very closely packed arrangement and the ice actually melt in a liquid form and there is some vapor is coming out therefore it is in a gas state so matter can exist either in a solid or liquid or gas so let's move to the next slide so i hope at the moment you still uh, understand what is the difference between the chemical the, uh, the matter can exist in the solid liquid and gas so over here type of changes yes remember when in chemistry in the chemical reaction especially we have two type of reaction either it is a physical reactions or a chemical reaction please keep in mind when i say it is a physical reaction physical reaction it means there is no new product form it means a simple example let's say i have a ice ice is what h2o when the ice melt when it melt it form a liquid of water so again what is the ice h2o and also the water it melt liquid so what is the, that water water is h2o do you notice or not before and after it is still form a same product there is no new substance form from this experiment i give you another example let's say you take a cup of uh, a spoon of sugar you try to dissolve it in a cup of water when you dissolve of course you get a sugar solution but end of the day can i change the sugar solution into a, a solid salt a sugar yes i can do it i take the water and i evaporate it and all the water has been come out and what is left behind it left behind only a sugar that we dissolve in the first place therefore there is no new substance form therefore it is a a physical changes but nevertheless when we are talking for a chemical reactions look at here a chemical changes over here chemical changes is where a reactant change to product what do you mean by is a it mean a reactant before the experiment and a product after the experiment is not going to be the same substance anymore <coughs> over here a simple example hydrogen burn in air to form water yes hydrogen is h2 and the air over here o2 when it combine it form h2o so you find out that before the experiment is a h and o2 but after the experiment it form a new product which is not really same with the earlier one they form it is a chemical reaction so we move on so they are in uh, extensive and intensive properties in i'm sure i'm sure in chemistry experiment most of the time we will come across of measurements that involve those things mass length and volume <laughs> okay then of of course we also have some those are in order to measure this uh, we might have a very expensive 
extensive proper property such as we have analytical balance to measure it the material depends upon how much matter is begin consider intensive property of a material does not depend upon how much matter is begin consider such as we have density temperature and color what over i'm trying to say extensive extensive here extensive here is stand for the example of extensive mass length and volume mass length volume those value are affected by the quantity i have a kilogram of sugar i have a meter of a roof or something like that i have a cup a cup of 20 hundred 200 ml of water so those value are affected by the quantity so those things we call as the extensive properties but nevertheless we also have intensive properties it means it's not depending of amount of substance let's say you are measuring a cup of hot water let's say the temperature is 70 degrees celsius that's a small cup and you are measuring the temperature of another substance at a bigger cup and the temperature is still the same 70 degree so what i'm trying to say over here density temperature and color it doesn't depends on amount of substance that we are actually putting into a beaker or uh, measuring so we proceed we have more slides coming in and of course this is more conversions of unit the si unit that we normally we know matter <laughs> anything that has remember the definition anything that has a occupy space and have a mass and please remember mass mass is measure of quantity of matter amount of substance so normally the si unit for mass is kilogram please keep in mind one kilogram is equal to 1000 gram and you can put it in a scientific notation manner <coughs> okay but please do not confuse between mass and weight mass and weight mass over here is the amount of matter and weight is actually affected by a gravity um, a simple examples i would like to talk with it our mass in earth and when let's say in the earth is your mass is your body mass is 70 kilogram and when you go to moon let's say you measure you still have the 70 kilogram that is your mass but nevertheless your weight will change according to the situation the gravity gravitational force let's say you are measuring your weight in earth it's going to be 70 uh, 70 kilograms okay but when you go to moon and measure the the gravitational force in moon are less compared to earth so you will have the weight are decreasing a less weight compared to on the earth so how to measure weight weight is actually c times with mass what is the c c is the gravitational factors over here so you can do this have a look then course we go more slides over here so a simple those are the si unit they are actually one two three four five seven of it so if it is a, a length we will measure in meter and those are the symbols mass in kilogram time in second car electric current in ampere temperature is in kelvin amount of substance is in mole and they are luminance intensity is this one cd candela okay so we proceed to the next one uh, a simple conversion a standard unit prefix use normally the prefix use in order to change a very big number or extremely small number in a much scientific notation manner 
so as you can see over here we have such as tera giga mega kilo deci centi milli micro nano pico those are the prefix with the symbols and you can have a look this one uh, the meaning of it the the value of each of it and of course the, if i'm talking about tera is actually power of 12 giga power of 9 mega 6 kilo is 3 very common that is 0 0.1 centimeter 0 0.01 and millimeter micro negative 6 nano negative 9 and pico is negative 12 those are the value so guys at the moment you must know how to change the unit in you must change if they give you one other unit you must able to change it accordingly such as over here is a very good example one cm cubic remember one cm cubic over here let me put it over here one cm cubic over here is actually stand for power by three that's why we multiply this thing with three times so cm the the question asks us to change it to this one in a meter cubic so as you can see over here multiply we know we know that 1 cm cubic is equivalent to 1 times 10 power negative 2 meter. So multiply by 3 and you get this. And please remember 1 dm cubic is always equivalent to 1 times 10 negative 6 meter cubic. And 1 liter equivalent to 1 dm cubic. Those are the standard conversion unit. So let's proceed to more examples over here okay a density in chemistry you will come across a lot the density density the simple formula of density is actually mass over volume it can be represented by d equals to m over v okay commonly the density for the si unit is in kilogram over meter cubic but nevertheless the question might give you in gram cm cubic over here and we can easily change those value as we have learned earlier one gram you can change it the unit are interchangeable accordingly so those are very simple example a piece of platinum metal with the density of this has the volume of this they ask you to calculate them as easy you know the density from here then you can substitute it accordingly then you finally get the value the mass is 96 gram 